G'day punters, welcome to the mailbag, powered by puntingform.com.au and betfair.com.au, I guess it is, is it? Yep. Just kind of c- comes up when you put in B. Like in the old days when you put in P, Peter, and just come up with Pornhub straight away. For me, it's B, betfair.com.au. Anyway, um, <laughs> Pete's going to be hosting this show, this first part, we're going to look at the good races at Royal Randwick. I reckon it's probably the best day of racing on the calendar anywhere in the world, and I think it's... And what are we going to do for this card, Peter? Group 1. Yep. So race 6 the, through 9. Starting at race 6, are we? Yep. Uh, great, uh, what is it? The Group 1 English size over 1,400 for the two-year-olds. Found an angle? Synthetic hold speed coming up afterwards. Uh, yeah, I think I've found a couple of angles here. It's a really interesting speed map in that you've got a few horses drawn out wide that have pushed forward previously, and I'm expecting they'll probably do the same, but... As a result, it does look very strong tempo early on in the race. Um, how the track plays, obviously, is going to be one of the key parts of the day. Given that there's a fair amount of rain forecast Thursday, Friday, not so much Saturday, I'm expecting you'll be in the higher end of the soft range. Perhaps heavy. Yeah. At least it's not Rose Hill because it would have been called off already if that was the case. Why did they put a meeting? <laughs> it would not have been. meeting at Rose Hill after. Big weeks of racing there because maybe because I mean. Mr. Rugby League's busy spending 500k a day at the NRL and that seems to be going awfully, or well, they're about to go broke, so he doesn't have enough time to run racing. Which surprisingly for them, there's some decent fields, but it's the greatest mm. day of all on the calendar anywhere, anywhere in Australia, probably the world. But they would 100% race at Rose Hill if it was a heavy 58, they just get through it. We've seen that happen before on a big day. Yeah. Um, but we're at, we're at Randwick. It's a good card. Yeah. Race 6, 1,400. Uh, look, Old Curb better than... Much better than... Um, horse that I'll sneak in race 1 or 2 on this card. Rulership? Yeah. Old Kirk was probably a better trial than it. Same trial. Yeah. The two I found were, were Old Kirk and Cultural Amnesia. They've both got a little bit of different form. I think Old Kirk's... Mission River, can it win? Uh, Mission River, look, purely if we go on the map, that's probably the main concern for me. Um, gate 14, Robbie Dolan is riding in okay form, but I'm just not sure if they're going to be positive or negative. It's uh, it's one of those ones that I've just got left in the middle and he'll need to make a decision pretty early. What about if Kieran McAvoy boots up and tries to control the race from Barrier 1 on AIM, can, can AIM win? I would be surprised if AIM has enough speed for it. Um, I think it's been even so far. For me, the splits it's running, it does look like it's suited stepping up to 14, mm. but I'm not sure if it's one prep away from really developing into a proper horse. Yeah, I just thought that AIM and Old Kirk, from a value perspective, are likely to handle the wet tracks. Mm. Uh, I agree. If you're trying to look for a runner to, to beat the, the favourite. It's a good race, eh? Hey? Last yeah, year, yes. Microphone beat Loving Gabby in Castle Vecchia. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> Trapeze artist won this race in 2016. But I mean, that's that's this sort of day, isn't it? Like, yeah. every race is going to be a good race. It's, it's a great just, race. It's great. It's great fun. I don't think it's a race that I want to bet into, but it's a race that I actually want to watch. Which is betting small. Which is yeah. real rare for me. If I'm not yeah. betting normally, I couldn't be bothered. Not bothered, but I am bothered. I want to watch it. Well, I think for me, this Saturday, it's one of those days where I almost want to bet into every single race because I pick one or two and at the price it's like oh you know i think they'll yeah. start shorter so it's not a day we're stamping anything but it's a good fun day to try and where will you be operating on saturday pete just in this like sort of fucking bruce wayne style mansion <laughs> mansion you fucking got yourself into yeah it's a cross between like a warehouse and a museum lobby ping pong table punters it's pretty good playstation 4 foxtel sound systems elite Massive kitchen, there's a Yarra, there's a tan. I don't know why he's got a telescope, it's not aimed at the score, it's aimed at the footpath on the tan. That's a bit <laughs> sus. I'm just making sure everyone's practicing their social distance. Bottle of fucking um, moist. Anyway. Good spot, hard to beat. It's been fat. Race seven, the Australian Derby over twenty four hundred, group one, three year olds. I'll kick us off. Yeah, go for it. Let him get the big right. lead here is obviously J Mac off quick thinker. Mm. It was very good. It's on the backup, so you'd think that sort of setup would suit a horse like Quick Thinker. J Max 
jumped onto Castelvecchio with Williams in isolation, I assume. Castelvecchio, we saw the, the replays of Le Grachur during the week on racing.com, and you got to think if the horse can run a really strong race behind a, a strong uh, horse like that, 2400 is going to be no worries. Just the, the breed looks looks <coughs> fine to me. Done deals should love it. Um, I think Shadow Hero got exposed over the Derby trip last year. Oh, yeah, how could you back Shadow Hero off the last year's Derby? Like, just not at you all. You need a big price. Yeah, yeah. It had every possible last year. It's still got the SP. Mm. It can, it can, it's, it's going in for me. And yeah, like, and Warning's an interesting runner. They seem to peak them at the right time. But when it won the Derby, do you think it got every possible? I think it was an outstanding I thought ride. It, it, it yeah. was like one of the more intelligent, like yeah. big right, race rides I remember. And I think it still would have won, but it wouldn't have won so nicely. Like it's a big, it's a big call to put a stayer into a race. Like you need to have mm. big size Kahuna's. And does Tommy Berry have as big a size Kahuna's as Damon Oliver? Probably not. I'd say they're at like. A, Half a size, mm. big. Like I love warning. I don't think you get any spoil with the price. Uh, I'm going to look for horses that on the quick back up here. Uh, I know Jamak gets off, but Quick Thinker did everything right last start. It hit the line like it once further. It got through that shit house Rose Hill track that copped a little bit, like 15 mils more rain, and they couldn't race on it. So it's probably worse than they told you. So the figures might be a little bit stronger than what they've said. Mm. Because the, the, they have to go off what the, the track rating is um, and, and handled it. And they got through it and it closed like the trip's going to be perfect. I don't mind Opie Bossom getting onto the Kiwi horse. It's not, it's not awful. And it maps really, really nice. I think Quick Think is the way to go. But uh, warnings really interest me. And I, I'm just going to try and gap Shadow Hero relentlessly. I didn't want to play at anything short in the market here. Uh, the two that I had time for and I thought were outside of the bubble and I will be playing at big odds on the day. I think you'll get much longer prices than what they currently are. The Queenslander, Eric the Eel, just everything about it profiles like it will mm. gobble up 2,400. The map's the issue for me. It will probably be back last, but Nash is on board. And the, Bit of alligator blood about it? Uh, what, in that it will be late to the track and have an owner spruiking the horse after the race? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I thought his last couple of starts, when not really suited by how the race was run up in Queensland, were quite good. Mm. I had him as a danger, and I think he'll probably be suited by the wet track as well. That's the uh, other thing. No. Yeah, I think he might be specced in the market. Yeah. I, I could see him starting around sort of the 19 or $20 quote. Like, you've sort of half found him. And then, I don't know, like, just that older form, beating up older horses over it you know, 2,000 metres, I think that counts for something in these derbies. Mm. Yeah, because the, 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 what's going to end up happening is a third of these won't even stay. Mm. And you, you guys are confident it's going to stay. Well, the other horse that I think will stay is Sherwood Forest. Uh, it's the Kiwi, won the Kiwi derby. Uh, strong horse, will put itself into the race on speed. Karen McAvoy is jumping on board for Tripod Walker, who really didn't give the horse a great ride or run in transit last start. It was sort of a bit stop, start, stop, start. I think will improve sharply. I'm just wary of that New Zealand staying form mm -hmm. coming across into a wet track. So those are the two at a price and double figures that I was happy to play. Yeah, the wet track, fast rocks on rock on bottom was heavy. I don't really like that. All right, what's next, Peter? TJ Smith. Oh, what a race. 1200, race eight. Uh, I'll let someone else go first because I've already said what I'm on. Well, you go, so. Scoot, because I need to come up with something. I think Outside Nature's trip in cause... the race immediately makes me think that Red Zell, I can put a pen through it. Um, if you go sort of looking at the top of the market, I think Bivouac is suited by a wet track and being sort of up and on the speed. I think Santa and Elaine's got much more to give and has got a cherry ripe preparation, likes the cutout, likes 1200 at Randwick, well suited. Loving Gabby. I think I'm, I'm not convinced. Um, I think she's just, she's more of a Mooney Valley type sort of horse. I don't know if she'll like the tempo and the bigger track, or it won't be as to her advantage here. 
I'm happy for someone to debate that. I thought Parada sets up really, really well. Um, Tommy probably suits this horse. It's not often that I really like to be with Tommy, but a horse like Parada suits Tommy's style. Um, and I can sort of, I, I've got flashbacks from when, I think it was the Galaxy last year when Nature Street, Nature Strip out Bob Parada, but here you go, you've got another 100 metres to gobble him up. And I think that Parada could do that. Exceedance probably wasn't, still probably not there, but he likes it wet. And then outside of that, yeah, Tofane doesn't mind with a bit of sting out, and that's probably the race for me. <coughs> I thought, um, Bivouac seems big odds. Like big, big odds. It's drawn six. It's got no weight relative. Gonna be there. It's gonna be right in the spot. It's got a huge turn of foot. It handles heavy. And then if you like it, loving Gabby seems kind of big odds. Um, I'm happy to be against Santa and Lane drawn two. I think I'll build my position and I will be betting around Bivouac. I don't want to lose loving Gabby, and we've already got a position on the horse that you're going to speak about. All right, I backed Exceedance at in the Mooney Valley race at ten dollars late, and it was weak. Just I just got to suck it. Probably means it. Probably means it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it wasn't suited versus the day, whereas I think in this race it will be suited. I mm. think the wetter it gets and the longer the yeah, day Yeah, well, goes I on. don't care. This I'm could sad. be their plan. I, I don't give a fuck. I'm sacking it. So I, my theory is by the end of this day, we'll see. This race will probably change complexion extremely over the last, I reckon, 150 to 200 metres. Yeah, we'll say, look, $17 above, Yeah. regardless of what the, the market's doing, I, I'll be with it or neutral on it. Yep. But, like, 14 and under, it's just going to have to... It's going to have to just get me right in the snufter if it wins, because... <laughs> what? The snufter. Oh, I don't know what that means, but it, it's funny. The... I've never heard the word before. <laughs> the snufter. It doesn't mean anything. You know, the... <laughs> 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 yeah, anyway, look. It, it, I'm, I'm with what Pete's going to talk about as well. Yeah, Big I'm, I'm just all over Pirata here. It's... Wasn't suited at all last start. Wasn't suited versus the day. It's got a really good SP. You go back against some of these rivals. Got a really strong second up record. Handles all conditions. Hit it's the line beautiful yeah, last exactly. start. exactly. The splits are excellent. And I just really like the wide barrier. I think Tommy will just probably put it in the second half of the field. And I'm expecting those horses to really slingshot off the turn and try and access those really wide lanes and often it, come into play on the wet. Does it look to you guys like this is the horse in this race that's been aimed all along at this race whereas like nature shoot was it down in melbourne yeah. going for a new market now it's at a tj mm. bivouac's been in all the good races as with loving gabby and exceedance all autumn yeah big grand final factor santa Ana lane is the grand final horse yep. and peter Ida is the grand final horse yep. of the ones in the market mm. yeah and then standouts the the sort of blowout yeah. three-year-old i was just going to say standouts like the real x factor horse if you put a line through last start all previous starts are outstanding. Splits are enormous. Again, just from gate 11, should just be able to put itself to sleep in the second half of the field. If it's good enough, it'll be charging late. You'll probably get about 30 to 40 to find out. So I think those are the two I'll be playing. I will definitely be chopping on Exceedance though. I think that horse, what it's capable of at its best, and especially back in Sydney, whether or not they'll make a difference as well, I don't want to be losing on it. So Pierrata, main play, stand out and exceed in something small. Yeah, Don the Doncaster, the Donny. Yeah. Doncaster is an unbelievable puzzle of a race. The condition of the track will be paramount here. I, you know, when I've done a couple of replays and tapes, I've sort of fell in love with a couple, but then when you factor in the weather, it's easy to fall out of love with them. I think Brandenburg is a an obvious way to. To land, I still can't forgive him from what was it Derby Day when he turned it up, and so like <laughs> I, mentally he's hard for me to fall into it six to one or or, or something in this race. Pr looks pretty short, doesn't he? Uh, for mine, yeah. And then Melody Bell looks like it's got too much weight according to the profile, but again in a slog, you, you know, you need you sort of need a horse that can run two thousand meters in my mind with the with the wet track. Super Seth, huge forgive last start, but again he's giving other three year olds. Wait, another good horses. 
A horse that I sort of liked at big odds was that was a, a forgive last start as well was Star of the Seas. 53 kilos looks a good setup here. I think he won over 1100 first up. Really sharp performance there. So I popped the check and was a little bit with that race that Cascadian won. And now all of a sudden he's just ballooned out to 40 to 1 and gets a much better setup here. If it if, it, if we get 20 mil on, on Friday, this horse comes into it absolutely enormous. Got some really short SPs from last spring. It's a horse that's lightly racing on the up. So that was the, the big roughy that I sort of found. But you could spend an hour and a half doing this race and still get yourself tangled in absolute knots. Uh, I, yeah, so that's why I'm going to keep it pretty simple. I think Melly the Bell will win. I think the weight gives us a good price. If you overthink every horse here, you like you've said, you'll make a case and you'll make a case to bet. She's third up. I underestimated her repeatedly in the spring and I was made to pay. I haven't been with her this prep, but I think she's done everything that she could do from the way, where she was in the run. Form's good. Um, he peaks and perfectly this bloke. He can really, really train. She won both the races that they wanted to win in, in spring. I don't think she could win the um, the All Star Mile the way she was ridden. Yeah. Um, I think she'll she'll run a big race and she's an outstanding bet if you're a smaller punter each way. I won't, I don't bet the race, but mm. it's, I reckon it's pretty hard to see it not running the place. Uh, Rob on the little birdie pod, which is on SCN tonight at eight pm. He's really keen on you long. Prince. Prince loves the profile of it, and I thought Rob, come on, mate. Like, get your shit together. <laughs> but then I, I listen to him, and he's starting to make a bit of sense. Then you look at the form that has not come out of the strongest race on paper, but you go look at the form. Three of the four horses out of that race have won, and all four have improved their overall punt form to the benchmark figure. It's the Ajax stakes, I think, yeah, memory. And, it, and it, yeah. it, it, it loses Nash and gets gun from a good inside. Like, in case for it. So it's probably yeah. the, one, the next one I'm in. Backing, but I reckon we'll end up just building a nice position on Melody Bell and go from there. Yeah, for me, Melody Bell's clearly the one on top. Third up profile is outstanding. You go back through some of those Kiwi performances, it's just such a strong third up horse. Distance suits, wet suits, map looks good, it's open clean, bosses eh? flying. It's oh, exactly. It's just, you know, it's hard not to be, uh, hard yeah. not to be excited by Melody Bell. Um, the other ones I want to have something on. Quacker Jack, I think, is an outstanding yeah, each standing. way, if you want to go that way, but I think it's an outstanding double-figure price. If you have a look at some of its uh, starting profile versus some of these last start in particular, it did have a failure, but it just looks really well suited from gate one. Should just be able to tuck in right behind the main speed and keep going strong. What about the track? Mr. I think it's a big chance, a, a real knockout. Like, I'm a little bit worried. If it's heavy, though, can we get rid of it? I'm, I, like, Seamus Award, I, I sort of lean that he can, they can get through it. Like he's had one performance on a slow track, I think it was the, the race in Adelaide, and he was actually really unlucky that day. So I'm not convinced that he's not going to get through the wet. The market hates him and his massive odds. I don't care like, if I yeah, if like, cross get every cross. box, I'll still yeah. bet a little yeah. bit on mm, him. If I, he's I, massive odds. Cause he's huge odds. We backed him to win the All Star Mile, and, and yeah. a bit like Melody Bell, he didn't learn anything. Yeah. Big track, big plus. But drawn car park. Yeah. Horse it might be the place to be, but... A horse with no speed. Yeah. I, I'd rather it sits like second pair, like four wide, than goes back to be last. Yeah. Two off. Yeah. I think that, like, the pedigree to me, it's it's a Seamus Award who's by Snitzel out of a success express mare. That's that's swim, all that side. And then the mare side is General Nadine, absolute swim, and the next one along the lines of Volksrad. This thing will get through the wet on breeding by the look to my eye. Without a fucking shadow of a doubt. I'm not gonna, I don't know. Rubber I, stamp. I don't know who you're just talking about. Mr. Quiggy. Yeah, like. Pedigree, pedigree wise. The other names. What to, are the other names? They're just stallions of. Like, the the, the sta Yeah, the stallions of the mare and the. And you can remember if they swim or not? Yeah, well, I've been looking at racing Fuck since no, I was that's very impressive. young, so I don't know, like I was 12. It's got angles. That's another angle from the angle for myself. We'll get through the wet. If you like, yeah, I can't, I can't see a reason why you'd want to be against that horse at, at 40 to 1, except for Glyn Schofield. If, if Glyn turns no, up... No, good. Perfect Glyn. 
Glenn's got Glenn's got good ability and there's a lot of prize money. That's all you want. It's a group one, Glenn. I think what did he ride Boban up in Brisbane at thirty to one that day? Oh uh, Boban. Yeah. That, that was, was a great day. That's when I started watching racing, Boban. Well, what happened properly. before then? <sighs> Trying to get a kick most sat days. <laughs> um, avoiding warm ups mostly early on. Like I would have missed uh, like B Z on fucking before the first because I was just dodging the warm up having a dart out the back or something. Very sick. I thought the other horse that's going to run it, working. run it out strongly was uh, Shared Ambition mm. down in the weights. It looks like a setup, doesn't it? The 2000 back to yeah. 1600. I think we've seen that from Waller a few times in these Group 1 models. Well, He's very the, clever, this. When thing. I went through the race, I, I thought that cheeky fucking Kiwi has... <laughs> it's won those two good races in in maybe early spring last year. Yeah. It's gone, this thing's good. Put it away. Yeah. Don it's a setup. It's a dead you know? set setup. You cheeky little <laughs> fucking lap runner. I wouldn't be surprised if he just jumped out of the ground there. Yeah. He's already got the figures to compete. Exactly. Mm. I actually um, forgot to talk about that one. Yeah, so I'll be Melody yeah. Bell, the Yulong thing, and Shit Ambition. They're the three that interest me as best. Yeah, I, I'm Melody Bell, Cracker Jack, Shared Ambition, and I have to have some. Back to I was just about to say, going. if Colden wins, I'll fucking oh, spew. It, it, it's been running around the opposite way, oh, looking please. like it's on the wrong leg. Now it's back in Sydney. I'll, I'll spew. I'll, it's lost bossy. What about Contapatho? You picked it last start at 20 to 1 or, or so. Yeah. You off? Uh, I'm, I'm off for this start. I, I've, I've got concerns. I think if, if Wolf gets a start, which I don't think it will, then I'm not exactly sure who's planning on leading this. It'll probably be one of Quacker Jack, Prince Fawaz, or Contipartilo. What about um, if... Oh, sorry. sorry. I was just going to say, like, depending on how they go as leaders up front, what tempo it is, they could really capitulate again and start paddling in the last 100 or so. So I'm looking for those horses just off, able to get into those yeah. better lanes. It might be like one of those Doncasts where, like, Royal Descent and... Um might have been Sacred Falls. It's just like a fucking, there was like an eight wide line yeah. and they were just stopping and starting. Yeah. The other horse, yeah, Imaging is another horse that if we have. If Rainbow imagined. Thief wins, <laughs> it's got to get a start. It's, the it's mailbag fourth, fourth has a month off. Because I backed that thing to fucking win at Pakenham. <laughs> two, two, two or three starts ago and it got rolled. <laughs> if it wins a Doncaster, I'm going to give up for a month. That'd be sick. Tough race. Like we've just great got, race. We've just mentioned about eight or ten chances yep. between us. It's yeah, but that's the best thing about these yep. great races. You get eight dollars this and second pick. Exactly, and some must play quaddy as well. Like you just have to play the quaddy. Yep, fair. Great race. All right. Um, should we do anything else for Randwick? No. Nah. That'll do us. Hope you enjoyed it.